<laughs> yeah, the lily of the valley. <laughs> uh, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore. Through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me. I've nothing here to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face. Where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a marvelous, wonderful thing to think about. Oh, my, I mean, you know, and what they mean, you know, when they talk about that lily of the valley, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like a valley that has, that is full of, of just, you know, just packed completely, totally dense. You know, they're talking about a dance, it's dense with nothing but, see, you see that on videos in lots of places, different places, uh, where it's just dense with all those white lilies. And, uh, and uh, so, but then you go down in there and there's one of them that's going to be a lot bigger and prettier than all the rest of them. <laughs> and that's what he's talking about. Jesus was among that whole valley that goes for a mile this way to a mile that way. The whole valley was full of dense white lilies and nothing but that. Just like it looks just almost like snow covering that valley. Then one in there somewhere is going to be bigger Great big, there's a great big uh, lily that you find that is great, a lot bigger and a lot more beautiful than all the rest of them. And that right there is Jesus. He's that lily of the valley, that special lily that is brighter and more beautiful than all the rest of them. And that makes just makes for a marvelous thing to think about how Jesus is brighter and more beautiful than all those millions of lilies and really more beautiful than all of them put together. And and then uh, being the fairest of 10,000 to my soul, you know, that's referring to, uh, you know, King uh, in the Song of Solomon, where it's talking about how that, you know, the maiden was fa more fair than, you know, than uh, uh, 10,000 others, uh, meaning really actually meaning a, a, a large number that, uh, that's so large that you can't count it. Uh, and, uh, and so, in other words, she was the, Fairer than any uh, other maiden that he had ever seen, you know, the fairest by far uh, than in, uh, 
you know, more beautiful, more fair, and more, you know, everything. And so that's where he's comparing, they're comparing that thing to Jesus being, he's that great, beautiful lily, and he's fairer than any other that ever was. And, and uh, just all of that becomes that not only in reality, but that to his soul. To his soul, Jesus comes in and becomes fairer than anything else that he could ever put in his soul and fairer than any lily he could find in the, in the, in the largest field of lilies. And so he says, uh, that's all I need then to cleanse and make me fully whole. What a beautiful song. Well, it, so many beautiful pictures there. You know, we tend a lot of times just sing through it not paying any attention to it, you know, but there's a lot of beautiful pictures there, which sometimes we need to slow down and just read it, you know, read the poetry and think about what, you know, think about it in a poetic sense, what the poet that wrote it was actually meaning to say and how that, <laughs> uh, just how, uh, uh, just try to get, you know, like you're critiquing a painting or something, try to look at it a while and, and ask yourself, well, what was the what was the the artist intending to paint there? What kind of picture was he intending to put in your mind? What was the the meaning of it, and what did he mean to say by the painting? And what did the, the poet mean to say by this by this uh, this poetry? And then, you know, even more so, what what was uh, was it meant to be when it mentioned these things in the Bible? What what were they meaning to say? And um, so then, um, so me is my comfort and troubles he's my stay. You know, all your sorrow is, is, is meant to exp uh, to express something where every sorrow, every pain, every trouble that you go through, that, that Jesus is sufficient for that, being so unusual, so beautiful, and so uh, extraordinary and everything, that having him in your soul takes care of all of these other problems and more than outshines them, you know. Just like as if, you know, you were in love or something, you know, and, and during the time, and at that time, you know, all any, uh, any other trouble going on in the world, you know, it's not even in your mind at all. And, and what you're in love with is so outshines anything else, especially in the moment that it all just becomes just like, uh, uh, just like a shadow somewhere, just nothing, you know, just becomes nothing like a, a candle beside the sunlight. Of, of light and and it's just totally it becomes totally meaningless because Jesus is so fair and Jesus is so lovely and Jesus is such uh, is uh, such an extraordinary uh, find uh, such a pearl of great price such a wonderful thing that you find that, that goes in your soul and takes care of everything until you see that nothing else really matters compared to him and nothing else even bothers you compared to him and there's no pain or sorrow that even adds up to all the light and the joy and the power that you're receiving in your soul from jesus and uh, so and he says on him so every care on him i roll so i just say oh okay roll all those cares on him because he'll take care of them because he's going to give us such wisdom and understanding and such power and such love that he's going to take care of everything before it even becomes a problem he's the lily of the valley the bright of morning star prayers of ten thousand he uh <clears throat> all my grief has taken you see he's taken all that grief and all of his sorrows, he's already borne all those sorrows. And the greatest sorrow and the greatest grief that has ever been in the world, or ever can be, Jesus bore that on the cross. I mean, just imagine what he went through on that cross and how sorrowful it made him uh, that uh, the sins of the world and uh, the being forsaken by those uh, uh, even among his uh his uh, group and being forsaken by the world and being forsaken and then you know some think maybe even forsaken by god for a second there on the cross when he said my god my god why is that forsaken me uh uh we don't know exactly what that means but if he was forsaken by god certainly that was sure a uh, a greater grief than any of us have ever uh, ever experienced and 
and uh, it, and so and every sorrow, the, the sorrow that he felt because of all the things uh, uh, that had happened, and because of the world, and because of the cross, and because of the way he was treated, and everything else was greater than any sorrow that we could ever feel. And so he's born all that, so he understands all that, and he's living within us, and so he can take those and he can explain to us how to deal with them, and he can. Uh, can have that shoulder for us to lean on that uh, that person to lean on that burden that we he can bear all of our burdens he can take that burden off your back and bear it and so forth and so in um, temptation he's my strong and mighty tower you know the temptation becomes uh, that was so strong becomes just very weak compared to that mighty tower of love and joy and peace and power and strength that Jesus is to be able to help you to overcome it. And so he says, he says, I have all for him forsaken. You know, that's what we have to do. We have to have to say, well, if it's this great, why are we piddling with these things in the world? Why are we thinking these mundane thoughts? Why are we thinking about this mortal life so much and worrying so much about that, you know, about everything with how we are clothed and how we are fed and how we are this and how we are that, what everybody else thinks and this kind of thing and all the gossip and everything. Why do we worry so much about that? Rather than just forsaking that and worrying about Jesus and his kingdom. And then all these things will be added to us, it says. The Bible says. And so he said, all my and all my idols torn, you know. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're worshiping the TV. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I know how that is. I mean, I don't. Don't think I exactly worship the TV, but I know how it was when it was the time at times when I uh, I spent a lot of time watching it, you know, and it, it, I really leaned on it as a crutch, and I really felt like you know that uh, it was a wonderful thing, and um, I uh, just you know spent a lot of time, you know, and for for a time they just kept it on all the time, just as a background all the time. Never wanted it to ever be off, you know, any any time. And some people do that; they just leave the TV on all the time. You don't want to miss anything, you know. And it, it becomes a comfort, you know. And then I even <laughs> I even started putting TVs all around so they'd be all I just lining the room with them, you know, <laughs> you know, like you do, uh, you know, when you're young, you know, and you put these uh, colored lights, you know, and you turn the Turn the overhead lights off and put these colored lights in all the plugs and and, and you know and then <laughs> especially if you're drinking or something and make it look like a club you know and and you have all these colored lights all around and and, and then your, your buddies and everything well everybody comes in there your girlfriend or whatever and uh, and it's all beautiful like that with all those colored lights and. And, you know, kind of the lights all dim, but you got all these co beautiful colored lights of every color, green, blue, red and everything all around. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and so you, then, then you fix everything up like that, you know, and uh, and then that makes that gives you comfort for some reason. I, I'd hate that now. I like the sunlight, you know, but uh, <laughs> it gave me comfort at the time. And so then. But, uh, having that in my mind, then I said, well, you know, I put the TVs all the way around, you know, all the way around me, TVs. And, and, and so that, you know, enough of them, I got 25 of them just everywhere. And so one, and then turn all the lights off. And then, of course, the TVs lit up, you know, the whole, the whole uh, the entire large room, you know, just is all lit up with a TV screen. Everywhere I look, there's a different show on. And. <laughs> and I never missed anything that way. And, and boy, I mean, I could just lay back and, oh, and, <laughs> don't I feel good? I've got everybody. I got the whole world coming right in, and I can just see everything. And, and the lights are low, and, and I can just watch all, all these things, you know, and feel comfortable. Lay back on that couch and watch all those screens, you know. And, uh, you know, just, just like <laughs> being covered by a large group of people, you know, that's just all around you, you know, and, uh, but yet you could turn it wherever you, you could try, turn them wherever you wanted them to fit yourself and your mood. And so that was a marvelous thing. And so I got hooked on that for a little while. And so we can get hooked on so many things like that as idols. 
you know, and they become idols, you know, and if we watch too much TV, it becomes an idol because it's comforting us rather than letting Jesus comfort it. And then, you know, for a while, just like everybody else, I, I had that time when uh, food, you know, eating, oh, I wanted all this gourmet food and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and gourmet coffee, you know, for a while it was coffee and then it was food. And all of this gourmet food, you know, and and uh, and have that all around me, you know. And then, of course, that that leads that leads right into watching more TV because you want. Well, I gotta watch it. I can watch it while I'm eating, you know. And so, and well, I gotta eat a little more so I can finish the show. You know, and, so, and you got this food all around you, you know, all the time. Oh, I want to make sure it's all here, you know, everything you know, that I that I want pop corn, fruit, and every kind of thing, you know, that chick fried chicken, everything, oh, it has to all be, be there so they don't have to miss anything on the TV to get up and get it, and so you, you and then you, you do that for hours and hours a day, and you let that, that becomes an idol, you know, until you get overweight, and then you have to stop that idol, and so one by one, you have to start tearing down these idols and letting Jesus take their place. And then you're happier, a lot happier in your life when Jesus is there taking that place rather than all these idols that you have, you know, worshiping money, you know, you can worship money, you know, just like trying to make a lot of money, you know, I'm having went through that, worshiping your car, you know, getting out and working on it all the time, shining it up, got to be perfect. You know, perfect, all oh, perfect shine, perfect windows that uh, can't have a dust, speck of dust on anything, you know, everything perfect in the, uh, the car and everything has to be uh, perfect, you know, you add something to it every day to make it better and better and better and better, you know, uh, chrome wheels and chrome work, more, more stuff on it all the time, you know, adding something on it, you know, special carpets and and a special light. I, one time I even went in, put special lights in it, you know. <laughs> I didn't put the colored lights, but I put all kinds of little little special lights, you know, to light the floorboard up, to light everything up, to make it comfortable in there, you know. And, and then you add all your stereo equipment and all that, you know. And you just work for days and days and days. I mean, that just comforts you. And that keeps you busy for days and days and days, adding all that stuff in there, you know, and get all that in there. And then get out on the street at night and cruise with all that, turn the music up. And you got all these special lights and everything, you know, and everything, you know. Put speakers. I even put speakers under the hood so it had a microphone. I could talk to people out there, you know, and stuff and go, on, go around doing all that kind of stuff like that, you know, and working on that all the time. You know, that was like, that become an idol. And then I, <laughs> I had to had to had to, had to get rid of all that. You had to get rid of that that uh, type of thing out of out of my life. Stop doing all that. You know, just get a plain car or whatever. You know, just to keep from doing that all that kind of stuff. You know, and because it would take up all all my time. You know, and <clears throat> and uh, so uh, we we have to get rid of these idols like that uh, out of our life and. Uh, and so he says, uh, throw all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, you know, through Jesus, I shall safely reach the goal, you know, because I've already torn down the idols from my heart. And now I got to replace some. I got to replace it with something. And so he replaces it with Jesus. And uh, and then through him, he will safely reach that goal of the rewarding life, the happy life, the prosperous life, all of it, by putting Jesus in there and replacing all those other idols that's taking up all the time and wasting all the time and uh, just creating a waste. And so then he says, oh, okay, uh, he's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me. So now we've got something that is never going to forsake us. You know, the car could tear up the TVs could, you know, well, TVs not going to because it's too, I had too many of them. <laughs> but that was part of the idol, making sure I had to set enough of them that if one of them went out, I had plenty more. Uh, but uh, but anyway, the, the, any of these things can forsake you, you know. I mean, it could be a storm come along or something else, you know, that would just, you know, or you'd have to some one reason or another, you just lose it all, you know, it can forsake you, and, uh, but this Jesus will never, never leave you, nor yet forsake you here, and then 
while I live by faith and do his blessed will. So we might as well just live by faith and do the will of God. And then we've got our mind on something that uh, the more we live, the more what he means, the more that we live by faith and do the will of God, the more, the less we have to worry about about our happiness forsaking us and about uh, about uh, the uh, the sin or the temptation or the uh, grief or the uh, the fear or the doubt or the torment or anything else coming back into us because we're doing his will and we're living by faith and we've got Jesus in there and we know he's there and we're worshiping him and we're praising him and we're praying and everything and so it's never something that's never going to forsake us but it's only going to get brighter and brighter and brighter until we reach that wonderful uh, heavenly shore oh yes with our great mansion that is up there I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go old. Yes, sir. And so, and uh, and then this was why this really hit me. I, I know I heard this before, but less than all the rest of those, I, which I knew I'd heard. Of course, I heard the whole song over and over many times growing up and everything. But uh, I, I had remembered, kind of remembered most of the rest of it. But I had not really remembered. I guess I remember the words, but I didn't really remember, remember the sense of this. The one, this last one here, this part, let's see, is that the last part? No, it's a, it's a, no, there's still some more here, but the, it's the last chorus. It's number three, uh, or the last stanza, the third stanza, right after it says, he never, will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here while I live by faith and live by, do his blessed will. He says, it says, a wall of fire about me, so I've nothing here to fear you know maybe it's because they ran that together a wall of fire about me i've nothing here to fear that i missed it or something but it says a wall of fire and then i know the other reason why that caught my eye is because in my prayers you know god has showed me something just like that over the past year or so he showed me how that if we keep the wonderful love of God and all flowing through us and the joy of the Lord and everything, which is, uh, you know, I, I've often said it's the purpose of these videos, uh, putting so many of them on there. People have asked me, well, why are there so many of them? We can't watch all, all of them. We'll, you know, we, uh, we can't... Uh, uh, we can't watch five or six different of all of your videos every day because we have our own to do and, you know, and so forth like that, you know, and but we can watch one, you know, and, and every once in a while and we'll uh, and then on the others, we'll <laughs> we'll go through and, uh, and put a lot and like the video. And so on, they told me that and everything because I'd put so many for a while there. I was putting, well, let's see, one at one time I, back four, four or five years ago, I was putting like 10 or 12 of them on there a day. 15 minutes a piece, you know, and uh, of course I ended up burning myself out doing that, but uh, uh, then they here recently I was putting like six or seven or eight on, uh, uh, and so nobody can uh, can really uh, uh, watch all of those, but they can watch some of them, you know, and so, uh, but, the, but the reason why I'm doing it was, and that's what I explained every once in a while on here the reason why i put so many of them there is so that that joy and that love and everything keeps flowing through me because i listen to them over and over and over and keep that love and that joy flowing through me and hopefully other people will listen to at least some of them and keep that joy and that love flowing through them because God was telling me that by doing that, keeping that love and that joy always flowing through, that that was creating a protective power, like a wall all around me, and it was causing me to shine more and more because I always had, I was always in a joyful mood, I always had love flowing through me because of hearing it all the time and hearing all these wonderful things that, you know, being said in the songs and all that keeps that joy flowing and makes that wall. And so he says that here, is that a wall of fire? So that struck me, a wall of fire about me. And then he goes ahead and said, I have nothing, here, so I have nothing here to fear. And so it takes away your fear. 
You have so much joy and so much love on your heart that it takes away fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And then also it creates that wall that keeps away. It, it causes the angels to draw near. And the angels encamp about you because of all that love and joy that's always flowing from you. And then those angels protect you from any kind of evil that would, if there were any kind of violence that were deciding to come near you or anything, the, that would keep it away. The angels that would be coming around would keep all that away. And so that's like a wall of fire. You know, that's the way that the description, I think, in the Old Testament, maybe or somewhere in the Bible, describes it. But it's really talking about the same thing. It's talking about, uh, it, because that's the way they, they viewed the, the protection, I guess, I suppose, because, of, you know, like a campfire or something where you have a fire and keeps all the coyotes and the wolves away, you know, because of the fire. And, you know, if you build campfires all around in a circle, you know, then you, know, then you have your you know, women, children, or whatever's all in the middle and there and everything, or, or maybe your uh, uh, covered wagons or whatever it is, and and uh, th that keeps the wolves and all away, and uh, wild animals and so on, and so it's a wall of fire all around you, and then I can imagine it was probably also talking about like a like an entire, maybe just like an entire forest fire. Uh, uh, up high, real high, like you've seen them two or three stories high. It's all around, all the way around. Nothing can get through. And so God is like, it would be like that where nothing could get through. And so it says, a wall of fire about me. And then it says, with his manna, he, my hungry soul, shall fill. Well, he's already put the wall of fire around me. He's protected me in all these ways. You know, he put it, his, it, it within my soul to uh, fill my hungry soul. He said, cleanse me, make me whole. Uh, put, uh, so it becomes a sorrow in my comfort and trouble in my stay. And uh, all these other things that he was saying, a grief, taking all the grief, being within me like a lily of the valley. That's what he said, within me like a lily of the valley and Paris of 10,000 and all of that taking the place of everything and, and warding off all temptation. And, and he's a, uh, Put that wall of fire around me. But now, after he's done all that, he says he's coming to us and feeding us with manna from heaven every day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you consider everything is in this song, <laughs> it's almost like the whole Bible. I mean, it's just almost like getting an entire <laughs> two or three semester course in God's uh, protective power and everything that he is and and just getting a, a, a doctor divinity or something just from this uh just from this this song it, it has everything in there he, with his manna he my hungry soul shall fill <laughs> okay and then after you have Jesus with it and Pat spent thousand ten thousand of my soul and the lily of the valley and all the rest of that and all that protective power and all that glory and all that joy and all that happiness and all that peace and all that love and everything else and now a uh, wall of fire about you and a, hung, and a manna uh, with your, his manna you're hungry for so will fill every day day by day moment by moment then it said you're going to be swept up to glory it said, then you can just reach up your hands and you can just Realize all the glory of God. You can just sweep up in your soul, you know, and then one day, of course, we'll be swept up into heaven. But right now we can even just sweeping up to glory, uh, you know, as we start contemplating everything this song said, then all of a sudden the joy and the happiness and the glory, all that glory fills our soul. It just sweeps us completely up off of our feet into the air and, and sweeping up to glory. And, and then we start seeing how marvelous it all is. We start seeing his blessed face, sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face. We're rivers of delight and then rivers of delight. <laughs> I thought we had already had the rivers of delight. But now after all this, we're going to get the rivers of delight. And so sweeping up the glory to see his blessed face. We're rivers of delight shall ever roll. Okay, he's the lily of the valley. I didn't know everything like all this was in this song. And now <laughs> I'm going to have to do the lesson on another one. But I, I, I think I'm going to have time, though. I think I started early enough. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. And uh, But uh, we'll hurry hurry up and 
uh, we'll give a, a little bit of the lesson. <laughs> this is supposed to be the lesson. Well, you know, but I think most everybody should already be full, pretty full, and uh, of all that manna. And uh, so, uh, but it is now 1 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States of America, North America time, Central. Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. every day, just like clockwork, you know, even more frequent than the post office, and even in rain, shine, and snow, we'll, <laughs> we'll always be here if the grace of God and the power of God and His mercy and energy and all uh, 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 provide for me to do so <laughs> and keep me uh, Keep me in his, uh, like this song says, in his power, which he's going to do. And in his great, through his grace and mercy, we'll be here every day, seven days a week, 1 p.m. All right. So, and it, this, it, to doing this healing class, this is our healing class, comes every day. And uh, uh, this one that we're doing now is a series called Effective Healing. And this is a Effective healing number 70. I can't believe we're already at 70. And we were talking yesterday about, uh, about the love of God going beyond the highest star and reaching to the lowest hell and all that. And how great the love of God is and the fact that the love of God uh, makes up the universe, holds it all together. Love of God is the seedment of the universe, just like it is in a family, marriage, or anything else, uh, or in society. You know, uh, uh, having that uh, that uh, family values and all, where there's love for for the family, for the partners in the marriage, the you know the man, the wife, and so forth, and the love then passing on to the children, cementing that family together, and then those families loving each other and loving the other families in the church, and the church becoming a family, and then that those families joining with other church families become the cement of society. That love of God becomes the cement of society and protects civil civilization. You know, and so, you know, like I've often said, you know, I mean. You know, you need to, if you can't be there sometime, <laughs> at least to send in the money for the missionaries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that this can keep going, the cement of society and this evangelism can keep going forward. You know, realize that it's more to it than it's you, just you going and getting a blessing. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I'd be, I'm there. You know, every time the door is open, so if I miss one time, and, and I and I don't really get a blessing every time anyway, and so I'm going to skip a time or two here and there, you know, and, you know, because, I mean, it gets kind of dry, you know, because I, I go uh, four or five days or times a week or three three times a week or whatever, and uh, so... Uh, uh, and we're thinking about ourselves, you know, we don't get a blessing. But what we got to think about is we've got to support that church because that's what holds our society together. And that's why we're having the problems we're having now is because people have forsaken the church and uh, and they're not supporting it. And so anyway, to get out back to this, it says the love of God it holds everything together. And so this evangelism about Jesus is what teaches the real meaning of love. And so that is going to serve that way. In his image, uh, and uh, that we are in his image, and God, uh, okay, he care. Uh, even then, God, okay, I, that was, I forgot what that was. Anyway, okay, so. For today, I am going to go into, and it'll be continued into the next lesson, but the principle I was going to uh, go into uh, is uh, that are we created by God or by man? You know, and we need to really think about that because are we created by the t what's on TV? The, uh, because what we think about all day long is going to determine really what we become and what we're like and what our whole personality is like and everything else. You know, so we need to really think carefully. Are we created by the TV? Are we created by the news? Are we created by what's going on out here in the world? Are we, are we created by uh, mass consciousness? Or are we created by the thoughts of God? 
and that is going to determine in a large part our health and how effective we are as, as healers. And then number two, all the all of this, all every scripture in the Bible is about healing. I, I've had to realize that every one of them, when you really think about it, has something to do with healing. So a lot of people that try to dismiss it and say, well, you know, that the healing, that was only a few verses and it was only when Jesus was, you know, healing or the apostles were healing. And you keep going, oh, no, you realize a lot of healing going on in, in there, even mentioning directly. But then there's the indirectly, the verses are always about healing. For instance, in, in Philippians 4 and 4, you, you hear it says, uh, Rejoice evermore, and again I say rejoice. And then, and then in 4 8, it talks about whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things. All of these things, you see, they go to form us in the image of God, and that goes to provide uh, a, a better uh, ability to receive healing. A, a, it's, a, it's a healing thought. Those are healing thoughts that create us in a healing part that bring harmony into our lives, and that harmony brings healing. And so all of this, and we'll go into that uh, this some more on uh, the next uh, lesson, which Hopefully, I'll be able to do here in just a few minutes as soon as I pray and, and then uh, uh, upload this video and then get back to it. Oh, oh Father, I pray in, in the name of, of thy, thy Holy Son, Jesus, now. Just help us, dear God, to really uh, get everything out of these songs and everything out of these verses and everything out of our healing and all of it and become effective healers and be able to raise people from all the incurable so-called incurable and terminal disease we pray you would raise people out of cancer dear god raise them out of lung uh, lung disease of every kind of pulmonary disorder every kind lord that you just take away any kind of flu bug any kind of uh any, any kind of a bronchial trouble dear god or covid 19 or anything like that that uh, remove that from people and lord i pray dear god now that you just heal of emphysema, oh dear God, our uh, our COPD or anything like that, Lord, as we pray, we can now give people a good, strong heart, uh, the beach, and oh dear God, be in the right rhythm and right strongly, and uh, Lord, that you would just give them good, strong blood vessels. There won't be any hypertension or hypertension or any kind of problem of the of the blood vessels at all, Lord, that they have good circulation. And now we pray, dear God, that you would just heal people of all uh, uh, kidney problems, the pancreas problems, uh, Lord, dear God. Uh, that you would uh, take away all diabetes, heal people of diabetes, and, and uh, balance all their hormones and balance all their blood sugar, dear God. And Lord, now we pray that you just heal people of liver problems, hepatitis or cirrhosis of the liver, things called by alcohol, that you'd, you'd break up the addiction of alcohol, dear God, that they would can turn their back on it and never come back. And Lord, I pray that you would heal people of back problems, oh dear God, oh dear Lord, uh, of all kinds, you take away all back pain, uh, take away all the spinal trouble, trouble and all multiple sclerosis, oh dear God, any kind of a, a sciatic nerve problems or other nerve disorder, any mental dis disorder, oh dear God, that you take away all of the, uh, uh, the shingles and stuff like that, and Lord, of all of the scabies and other irritations of the skin, all rashes, and Lord, just heal people of those things, uh, and Lord, Lord, and we pray that you would raise them up. Uh, uh, oh, dear God, just heal people of osteoporosis, give them good, strong bones and good, strong joints, uh, heal them of rheumatoid arthritis and all arthritic inflammation, uh, inflammation of the joints, uh, give them good, strong joints. Oh, dear God, good, strong bones and joints that they might rejoice and jump and shout and dance in the spirit oh, of all of all these good things that you have done for us. And now we pray that you'd lead people up out of all the need of any kind of drugs. Oh, dear God, just break that addiction to heroin. Break that addiction to cocaine. Oh, dear God, just break that addiction. Oh, dear God, to, to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 any kind of phenobarbital, any kind of barbiturates or methamphetamine, dear God, uh, any kind of crack cocaine or fentanyl, oh dear God, just lead people uh, up to the high mountain of joy, way above all these things where they see no more need for any kind of drug or stimulant like that, and Lord, we pray that you just uh, just heal people of any need for, uh, for uh, 
uh, for nicotine or cigarettes, if they can just lay those cigarettes down and easily walk off from it and never turn back and never miss it. And Lord, if they can turn away, away from the bottle, never have to drink another drop and never even miss it. And Lord, just lead them up to a high mountain of joy where they feel like they're, uh, uh, they've been lifted up on eagles' wings far above the problems and troubles of this world, far above the obsessions, oppressions, and depressions of this world. Oh, that they may be able to live in that, oh, that eagle's nest uh, uh, there with your protection and your wings above them and all and never have need for any other drug or, 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 or cigarettes or alcohol. And Lord, now we pray that you just raise us all above the sense of depression, blues, loneliness, fear, any of those kind of things, far above the sense of being oppressed by anything or anybody or any group of people or any kind of, uh, uh, of situation or government or anything else. Uh, deliver us from that. Deliver us from uh, being obsessed by the habits of this life. And we pray that you just lead us up like that. And Lord, now we pray that you would just uh, uh, touch our uh, pastors and our leaders of our churches and cause them to have wisdom and understanding and be able to lead properly appropriately and properly and good and oh dear god just touch all of our uh, all of our missionaries that they'd be effective and they'd be passionate about the lord and have the wisdom of god and have the protection of god protect them on the fields where they're serving him oh dear god we pray now that you would just touch oh dear god just bless our pets bless all of our pets dear god that uh, they uh, would be a uh, uh, kept well and kept protected and don't let wild animals catch any of them don't let them pester each other and lord dear god we pray now that you would just cause them to get along in harmony and now if there be any uh, domestic uh, uh, animals that need to be have forever homes that you would find forever homes for them, and they give them a good a nice heavenly place to live and, and lord now we pray that you'd bless all of our farmers and give them prosperity that the crops will come in plenty us this year and lord to break our ranchers and protect them and they'll be prospering their livestock and their cattle and their horses and so forth uh, be prosperous in that Lord and oh dear God now I pray that you'd protect our police officers oh dear God protect them oh my dear Jesus uh, uh, from any kind of harm that they would serve their time out in, in peace and, and enjoy and in reward and everything and Lord just protect all, all of them from any kind of violent behavior or, or bad people and now we pray dear God you would protect our, uh, uh, our, our, uh, the leaders of our country, oh, all of our congressmen and all of our leaders, that they would have the wisdom and the understanding, all of our governors have the wisdom and the understanding to lead this country uh, uh, in a wise way, give them wisdom and understanding. Oh, dear God, we pray all these things in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, praise God.